People on the internet love to throw around the term dead game. When the player numbers start falling off as the game gets older, they say it's dead. When a new update comes out that they don't like, they say it's dead. When it gets added to Steam for the first time, hundreds of thousands of people call it dead. But mostly when people call games dead, they're usually over-exaggerating. You can load up these games at any time of day and queue for a match and you'll get a full lobby extremely quickly. These games are far from dead. People don't know the meaning of the word dead because there are games out there that are well and truly abandoned where you could sit in queue for a match forever and still never find a game. But being old and niche doesn't mean the game isn't fun. And today I want to prove that to you by showing you a true diamond in the rough, a game that deserves one last day in the spotlight. Aliens vs Predator. Aliens vs Predator is a game that was created by Rebellion Developments in 2010. And it's a game that is so dead that I had to buy 10 extra copies of the game just to be able to get a half full server that I could get some footage for this video on. It's a game with three unique single player campaigns and these campaigns are the main attraction of the game. But the game also has an incredibly unique multiplayer mode that plays like no other game I've ever seen in my life. It's team deathmatch with three teams. The aliens are incredibly fast and can climb on any surface and they're also very stealthy and hard to see in the dark. But their health pool is very low so they rely on sneaking up on their opponents or swarming a singled out player as a group. The humans are physically weak and slow but their guns output incredibly high range damage that can melt anything you see in seconds. Then there's the predators a sort of middle ground between the two. You're fast and stealthy, but not as fast and stealthy as the aliens. And you have high powered ranged attacks, but not as high powered as the humans. The only goal of the game is to get as many kills as possible as a team. First team to hit the score limit wins. This is what you would call an asymmetrical multiplayer game. Most multiplayer games are symmetrical, where both teams have access to the same characters and weapons and loadouts and all that good stuff. In in an asymmetrical game, the teams don't have access to the same characters, weapons or abilities. It's asymmetrical, you know, clues in the name. The most famous example of an asymmetrical multiplayer game is Dead by Daylight, a game that you've likely all heard of. Sis. But there's other examples of it out there too, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game, or Left 4 Dead vs. Mode, or that old source mod called The Hidden. I can smell you. <laughs> or that One Evolve game that died in a week, or Saxton Hale mode from Team Fortress 2. It's no longer Team <gasps> It's still, oh, it's still team posing, holy fucking menacing. But in all of these games, there's only two teams. Aliens vs Predator is the only game I can think of that has three unique teams, all with different powers and weapons and stuff. I played this game for the first time when I was a kid, and recently I decided that I'd take a trip down memory lane and buy it again to go play the multiplayer. But it turns out that there is not a single solitary human being playing the multiplayer at any time of day. There is a dedicated Discord server for the game, but even even that seems dead. If you're American and you play at peak times, you could maybe get a server full of people to play it, but even that's a bit of a stretch. And if you're not in America, like me, then you've got absolutely no hope. But I still really wanted to play this game, so I did what any sane person would do under these circumstances. And I bought 10 additional copies of Aliens vs Predator for a bunch of my friends so we could all play it together on one Friday night. I had 11 players in the wings, but only 9 of them showed up because because my friends are bastards and they hate me. So here's how our experience went. Let's first talk about the aliens, because this was the first team that I played as in my session, and having played the campaigns, I was prepared for what I was about to see, but my teammates immediately started complaining. The aliens can climb around on any surface, and if you look at a wall that's somewhat close to you and press jump, you can leap from one wall to the other. But the camera perspective when this happens can be super disorienting if you're I'm not used to it, and people were kind of mad about it. 
what in the fuck? But after a little while of getting used to it, it's actually not so bad, at least in my opinion anyway. The crosshair in the center of the screen is always oriented in relation to the environment. So when you crawl around the walls and ceilings, the crosshair rotates. But if you do suffer from motion sickness in games, then this might be slightly unplayable. But once the complaints about the camera died down, we tried to coordinate some plays. I see a human. I'm saving you. Oh, I'm not. You see where I am? Oh, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Going up. We're here to help. Go, 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 go. Twice in a fucking night. Oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck? Playing the alien was my personal favorite because once you get used to the wall climbing mechanics, you can travel anywhere on your screen in about two seconds. You are blisteringly fast and you can use this speed to do some crazy things. Your health pool is insanely low, but if you have tricky movement, the Marines will find it very hard to hit you. So you can use your lunge attack off the walls and ceilings to close the gap faster than they can shoot you. At least that's in theory anyway. In practice, that is much easier easier said than done. Because let's quickly talk about the Marines. In our testing, we found that the Marines were by far the most powerful species in the game. You're super slow compared to other species, and you have absolutely no stealth whatsoever, but your guns do just unfathomable amounts of damage. One single Marine on his own might be easy to catch out with a little bit of smart pathing, but just two or more Marines playing together made it incredibly difficult to close the gap. They do so much much damage, and the machine gun that they spawn in with has 99 bullets in the clip, and it reloads in about two seconds. So they can just hold left click at you for five years before having to reload, and the reload may as well be instantaneous anyway. And they have a motion sensor on their gun that makes sneaking up on them relatively difficult. It's not impossible to do, but it's difficult. Hitting a melee attack on a marine does stun them, but you have to melee them three times to get a kill. And after the first stun wears off, they have time to shoot you again before you can stun them again, which is even more time for them to kill you. Your only option against multiple marines was to sneak up on them and get a grab, or else there was just no way you could possibly kill them. Although perhaps it didn't help that two of the people I brought along to play with me are actually Prem TF2 players, meaning that they play in tournaments at the highest level possible in an incredibly fast-paced first-person shooter. So whenever one of them was playing the marines, it felt like you literally couldn't go anywhere near them. But when a little baby noob like me played marine, it still felt like the most powerful class, but maybe a little bit more reasonably so. But then the final race is the predators. The predator is the most complicated to learn by quite a large margin. They have a leap that lets them jump to high places. They can go invisible. They have all the same melee mechanics as the aliens. They have four weapons that they can pick up around the arena, all of which have different mechanics mechanics and strengths and weaknesses. And you also have thermal vision that can highlight humans and alien vision to highlight aliens. This might not sound like a lot, but compared to the alien and the human, it's way more complicated. And that made it very hard for any of us to actually get the hang of playing as the Predator. Although I get a funny feeling that even if we did get the hang of playing it, the Predator would still be by far the weakest race by a long shot. In a 1v1 against an alien, you're relatively well matched, but an alien never has to directly 1v1 you because of how mobile they are. And you have mobility too, but you can't match the mobility of an alien under any circumstance. And in a direct 1v1 with a marine, you have basically no chance. The marine just deletes your health pool way too fast. Now, the predator does have ranged weapons, but they all kind of suck. There's the laser cannon thing that locks onto a marine or an alien, but the lock-on really sucks from medium to long ranges, so it can just miss. And if you tap fire it, it does basically no damage. There's this boomerang thing, but it just absolutely sucks massive balls and does no damage and is hard to aim and it can only really hurt anyone when they're in a super tight corridor. Then there's the spear throw, which does huge damage, but the way the aim works is so bad that you can basically never hit anyone with it unless it's a point-blank throw. The aim arcs to whatever spot on the wall your crosshair is aiming at, but the projectile also has travel time, so you'll just completely miss your target unless they are standing completely still. Then there's the mines, which are super easy to spot, but definitely do get you some cheeky kills when people aren't paying attention. So the predator kind of just felt like he was a bit out of luck. They're meant to be a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none sort of character, but that just made them massively outclassed by the other two 
races. And if anyone with 10,000 hours in the game wants to tell me why I'm wrong in the comments, I would actually really appreciate that. Because perhaps Predator is secretly the best one, and I'm just too much of a big noob to understand it. But in my first impressions, it seemed like the Marines reigned supreme, the aliens had tons of potential to do crazy things, and the Predators were just struggling to get any kills on anyone. So pretty much everyone I played with agreed that they enjoyed playing Predator the least. But the aliens and the humans, they were a blast to play. The aliens are constantly trying to bob and weave around cover to outplay the aim of the Marines, while the Marines have moments that feel like something directly out of an alien movie. Oh, he's going crazy right now. Oh, H2. Oh my god, he's fighting everyone. We got, we got oh, I'm in trouble here. Oh shit. They're on the walls, they're on the roof. <laughs> they're on the help. Hello? What the fuck is Multiple aliens. Oh dear lord. Oh. Oh, hey. oh, me, oh, me, oh, me, oh, me, oh, me, oh, me. Nah. Coming out of the walls, man. Game over, game over, man. Game over. Game over, man. Game over, man. Now, the team deathmatch game mode isn't the only multiplayer game mode. There are a handful of other modes you can play, but most of the other game modes kind of... They kind of suck big penises, to be honest. There is one other game mode I did like, though, and that's Infestation. It's completely unbalanced and brutal, but still super fun. It's essentially Infection from Halo. Everyone starts as a Marine, and one player gets selected to be an alien. When that one alien player kills a Marine, the Marine that died becomes another alien, and the Marines have to just last as long as possible. This is completely brutal for the alien player, because if the Marines actually pay close attention and try their hardest, there's practically nothing you can do. They will just group up and sit in a wide open space where you can't sneak up on them. And their motion sensor will alert them to roughly where you are before they even see you. But when you're playing with your friends who hopefully aren't trying too hard, this game mode's really cool. At first, the alien has to be incredibly patient and hide in the shadows, waiting for a person to split off from the group or make a mistake. But once just a single marine dies, suddenly there's two aliens aliens, and two aliens can coordinate an attack on a single marine and kill him before his teammates can save him. So the game starts off slow and methodical, but quickly accelerates just after one marine has been killed. It's a pretty cool take on an infection game mode, even if it's completely brutal on the lone alien at first. There's also a four-player survival mode, where you're four marines versus infinite waves of aliens. But this was incredibly boring. There's only two maps, and it's quite slow-paced at first, so it wasn't too exciting. But the most notable game mode to me was the Predator Hunt. Not notable because it's good though. No, it's, it's really bad. Oh my god, this game mode is terrible. The premise is similar to the Infestation game mode. Everyone spawns as a Marine, but then one person is chosen to be the Predator. But instead of the Predator turning the Marines into Predators after a kill, it's flipped on its head. Whenever a Marine kills the Predator, that Marine becomes the solo Predator player. The way you win the round is by scoring 10 kills whilst playing as the Predator. In theory, this is a super clever and interesting game mode, but in practice, it's completely awful. Yeah, no, wait, wait let me kill him, so I, I want to fucking try and at least, like, do the thing, you know? No, 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 oh, there shoot, you are. Shoot. Don't shoot him, don't shoot him. Stay still. There you go. Now it's me. I don't spawn with my weapons, either. I have to run around and pick them up if I want to use them on you. One of my Problem. weapons is in the room where you're all stood. Problem? <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> Empty, bro. The marines are just so much more powerful than the predator that this game mode is just completely unplayable. So the game mode ended up just being eight marines absolutely mowing down this poor predator player until the game ended. I think the developers probably expected the predator to be like super powerful and a killing machine and stuff, but in reality the predator is the one who should be terrified. Now it might seem ridiculous that the devs would ever think this game mode was balanced at all, but I actually have a pretty good theory as to why this is the case. You see, Aliens vs Predator was predominantly designed for consoles. The PC version is just a port of the game, and most of their marketing and most of the copies sold were for consoles. So on a console, playing on a controller in 2010, with the sun shining directly onto the screen, maybe the Predator seems pretty powerful. The controller player playing Marine can't aim 
the machine gun to save his life, and the Predator's stealth is super visible on my modern day 4K 5 million hertz monitor, but on my old crusty TV that's a mile away from my face, the stealth on the Predator's probably quite good. So perhaps in that environment, the Marines don't seem so overpowered, and the Predator would have a better time catching people out and killing them. But on the PC version, the Predator literally stands no chance in this game mode, to the point where people were actually trying to not kill the Predator because they didn't want to play as him. Someone find, Someone find the shotgun. Someone find the shotgun. Oh, it's too late. Someone find the shotgun seconds, so I can put it in my mouth. Four, three, Ex that's exactly two, what I meant. One, two, <laughs> In fact, this game being designed for consoles also does a good job explaining the game's balance in general. The Marines are crazy strong and do crazy damage, but on a console in 2010, hitting an alien that's dodging and weaving like that was probably really hard, and the Predators probably had a pretty easy time sneaking up on people, because their stealth is actually really hard to spot on a crappy TV. Now, I know I just spent the last few minutes saying negative things about the game, but I do actually think this game is super fun. The team deathmatch game mode is incredibly interesting, and an asymmetrical multiplayer game with three teams is something that you can't really find anywhere else. And usually this is the part where I would recommend that you go buy the game and try it for yourself, and try to revive the multiplayer somewhat. But I actually can't really recommend you this game. This game isn't free, and it's also so insanely dead that it would require literally thousands of you to go buy it to repopulate it. However, there is is three single player campaigns, one for each of the races, and the single player is pretty fun, so maybe you could buy the game for that reason. But if you thought this multiplayer looked really cool, you'd be very disappointed to load the game up for the first time and see a server browser that looks like this. Thanks for watching.